Hello and welcome to the Manhattan Project. Uh, another first for us. We're doing our first uh, tasting um, with uh, Dan McElwain, and uh, he is a brand ambassador with uh, Pursuit Spirits. Um, this is our first meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, little backstory: I had created a Facebook group for uh, seeking out whiskeys in our our county, the Anne Arundel Whiskey Hunters. Dan joined, and he's been one of our most active members. So good to finally meet you. And uh, let's get this started. Yeah. Thanks so, for having me. Yeah. So first of all, first of all, how did you get involved with uh, Pursuit? Um, like a lot of people, I, I travel a lot for work. I get tired of the same old stuff on the radio. Um, I've been a whiskey geek for quite a while. I found their podcast, interestingly enough, that's how they started the whole thing was with a, starting a podcast. Um, I've just... I like their story. I like what they're trying to do. Whenever they decided they were going to start opening up distribution here in Maryland, I wanted to jump right on. Cool. Very nice. So let's uh, let's kick kick this off. Uh, what do what do we got first? So the first two things I I have on the bar just for the sake of visual purposes are our flagship bourbon and our flagship rye. The bourbon is the glass that's closest to you. This. Uh, this one right here. Okay. Yeah. So. Our bourbon is a blend, and I know when people say people hear the word blend, they automatically get a little funny. Right. Um, there's a difference between sourcing and contract distilling. Pursuit contract distills with three different distillers. They use our mash bills. They use our barrel specifications. We age it there because we want to keep that terroir before we bring it to Louisville, where it's blended to our product, which is the... Pursuit United Bourbon and the Pursuit United Rye. So this is our bourbon. It's 108 proof. It is a blend of a Kentucky bourbon from Bardstown Bourbon Company, a Tennessee bourbon from one of our distillers in Tennessee, and then a weeded bourbon from Finger Lakes Distillery oh, wow. in New York. Okay. Hmm. So you've got a lot going on in there, but they all play off each other really, really well. And I think it's a great product. Is there any uh, backlash of crossing line between Tennessee and Kentucky? That's an interesting story. I mean, you know, I've heard all kinds of reasons why mm -hmm. Tennessee wants to be Tennessee whiskey. Right. You know, the Lincoln County process, the you know, the people being upset with you know, this and that. But we've honestly just found that the products, the bourbon from Kentucky is a traditional Kentucky bourbon. It is bold. It is flavorful. It's got oak. It's got sweet. It's got spice. The Tennessee component that we bring in is a little bit lighter. It's a little bit more youthful. It's got a little bit more of those fruity tones. Okay. So that's what we're looking for. Gotcha. It helps just kind of it's – in, it's in the marriage. It just makes it work. Okay. Very good. Ooh. Smells hot. Smells good. It's very nice. I'm getting a lot of caramel. Mm -hmm. Some brown sugar. Mm -hmm. uh, it's actually, uh, for a high proof, it's kind of buttery, surprisingly. So interestingly enough, and this is something I didn't know until after I became an ambassador, the Kentucky component and the Tennessee component both have a higher barrel proof, mm -hmm. high one teens, low one twenties. Our New York component, the weeded whiskey, has a low barrel entry proof. Okay. So it comes out of the barrel at a low proof. Hmm. So we literally cut our whiskey with whiskey, with whiskey. instead Very of, you know, watering it down to that point. So okay. it's every bit of 108 proof, right. but that weeded component from New York really mellows it out, really smooths out some of those bold. And, and yeah. And yet it's still very rich. Mm -hmm. hmm. Very nice. That's impressive. As usual, can't wait to try that in a Manhattan. Mm-hmm. We'll get to our rye in a minute, okay. but I think you'll really like the rye in Manhattan. But before we go to a completely different flavor profile, this is our toasted bourbon. So again, it's the same liquid, but similar to what some of the other distilleries are doing, Maker's Mark, Oak and Eden, some of that, other companies that are trying to be environmentally responsible with the use of oak. We use some oak alternatives. We take some French and American oak cubes so we can toast multiple sides of them. Okay. Put our component into containers, 
submerge these toasted oak cubes in there, half American oak, half French oak. Interesting. Because when they put them together, they fight each other. But if you do it in separate containers and right. then bring it back together, At the end. it's okay. gorgeous. Yeah. So, again, it's the same product, but with this one, you're probably going to get more – I get more like – I definitely get more toasted oak. I definitely get more of the darker brown sugar. And I even get a little bit of a um, a nut, a peanut. Okay. Like, like, like you would get in a Jim Beam because Jim Beam's synonymous for that, having a nut flavor. Smell is completely different. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. It's the same liquid, but what you can do with some of these finishing things. You're right. I'm getting it. It does taste pretty much the same. Mm -hmm. It's a little more mellow. Yes. And uh, actually, a lot more mellow. It's interesting with that toasting. Just yeah. smooths it. Just mm -hmm. takes it right down. Very nice. All right. So two two big winners so far. Like those. Yes, sir. All right, so let's move on to the reason that Pursuit actually started distributing here in Maryland. When they launched the rye, the rye is, again, a blend. Mm -hmm. We contract distill a 95-5 rye. For those of you who don't know, 95-5 means 95% rye, 5% malted barley in the mash bill. So Bardstown Bourbon Company makes us a 95-5 rye, and so does Sagamore. And, again, if you're from... Where Todd and I are, Sagamore's right up the street, right up here in Maryland. So it only made sense if we were going to have this rye to distribute here in Maryland. So the rye is a 95.5 rye from Bardstown Bourbon Company. It's a 95.5 rye from Sagamore. And then it's a barely legal rye. It's 51% corn, 36% or sorry, 51% rye, 36% corn, okay. and the rest is malted barley. Gotcha. So it's really a bourbon drinker's rye. Right. That that rye that rye with the high corn mash bill takes away a bunch of that black yeah, pepper, the spicy. Yeah, yeah. It takes away that a lot of that mint. It's still there. Not that dill, those are all gone. You just get a lot of sweet. I am so always surprised when I have our rye how sweet it is. Right. Mm. Which is interesting because that is a complaint of a lot of people about rye. It's too peppery. Yeah. It's too spicy. The, 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 I mean, in rye spice, it'll it'll get you. I mean, if you're not if you're not ready for it. Right. You'd be surprised, but again, yeah. I find this, our rye to be much more approachable. I wouldn't guess this is a rye, honestly. Mmm. <clears throat> now that is interesting. Wow. I've never had anything like this. And again, you would probably be shocked. Well, maybe you wouldn't be shocked. I don't know. But this is also 108 proof. Really? Everything we have is 108 proof. I tell you, that is... That's 108 proof rye. That's pretty impressive. For the lack of a better word, smooth. Mm -hmm. you know, I know that's a word that doesn't like to be Right, used, that's but, that's the yeah. word in the uh, whiskey community that people are like, uh, what does smooth mean? But it is a smooth rye. It's less peppery. And a lot of those harsher baking spices, they're just not present because of that high corn in that one mash bill. Oh, so good. <sighs> I had some friends over a few weeks ago. They had to leave the house. Well, not them because they weren't fit to drive. We had we had to have a friend go up to the store and get them more vermouth because they were just hammering really? Manhattan's. I bet with that rye. Well, both of these, all three of these so far are man super Manhattan worthy, especially at that high proof. Mm -hmm. mm. If you are going to make a Manhattan with the rye, I would probably because it's sweeter. I'd recommend more of a dry vermouth than a okay. sweet vermouth. But or maybe cut that's the, just, yeah. maybe cut the ratio back a little bit. Yeah. Okay. So this is our other rye. This is our finished rye. Again, using alternatives, we we take the rye, we blend it to make it what we want, and then we add sh former sherry barrel staves. Just the staves. We don't re-barrel it. In a sherry barrel. We've taken the barrel apart. We just use okay. the staves, submerge them in there. I get a lot of the grape and a lot of the a lot of the wine mm -hmm. on the nose. And then again, it's it's even sweeter than the, the flagship rye. Right. Interesting. I have, I haven't heard of that process before, only using the staves. Well, again, I mean uh, you know, getting on this is my high horse, this is not a pursuit high horse, but this is trying to be environmentally conscious. I realize that 
the furniture industry and the cabinet making industry are probably more the the culprits in the in the wood industry than you would think the barrel industry right. is the cooperages are but if we don't need to use the entire barrel you know and only sure. use it once or something like right. that makes perfect sense this is uh i'm getting a lot more fruit from this one oh yeah 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 i definitely get the grapes i definitely get the wine Right, that dessert wine, maybe some, maybe some apple sherry. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. That's nice too. What's the proof on this one? One oh eight. Really? Mm -hmm. Is there anything that's not one oh eight? Nope. Really? That's our little joke in the whiskey industry. We're huh. we're one better than Weller one oh seven. Hmm. Boy, they, 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 these do not taste hot at all. No. Yeah, I'm surprised. No. The first one was maybe a little bit, but the the other ones no. And I will tell you, I do a lot of tastings in liquor stores around here, right. um, Anne Arundel County, Howard County, PG County. And as a bourbon boy, it makes me so sad whenever right. we outsell the rye. The, the rye outsells the bourbon two mm -hmm. to one. But come on, you know. Yeah. But so those are the four readily available pursuit flagship products that are out there. Mm -hmm. I did bring a couple of treats for you. Okay. Um, this is one, again, if you're in the whiskey community and you know what this one is, this is Pursuit's Double Oaked, which is different than the Toasted. It's our Double Oaked product. Um, we just we just launched the Double Oaked this year. Um, it was supposed to be a distillery-only product. Some cases came here to Maryland. Some cases went to Sealbox. Okay. And it was gone like that. Wow. I, I even as a brand ambassador, I consider myself fortunate to have a bottle of that sitting around. Very nice. So if you grab your bourbon glass, again, 108, just using the alternatives. Yeah, so for those of you watching closely, I mentioned that the AC uh, took a crapper the other day, and so it's a little warm and it just got infinitely warmer with this whiskey in us. Yes, and <laughs> you know, the lights and you know, it yeah. is what it is, but <clears throat> There are worse ways to be spending a night without exactly. air conditioning. This, so, this soon will pass. This thing, when I first tried the uh, Double Oak, I wasn't sure if I liked it. Mm -hmm. I was expecting the Woodford Reserve Double Oak, the Elijah Craig Toasted, right. the Old Forester 1910. That's what I was expecting when I tried this. But it's nothing like them. Okay. It's those yellow butterscotch candies that were in your grandma's purse when she was trying to keep okay. it quiet in church. That's the best way I can describe it. And when you when you say that, that's exactly what it smells like. It smells wait, like a, wait, a wait till you get it on the palate. Okay. It's not. I, I I make the drink. I'm like, it's not even the good butterscotch. It's like the those those penny candies. Mm. Your grandma was like, here, be quiet. And you called it. That is exactly what mm -hmm. it tastes like. I know that right now. That's the double oaked is. Not readily available. You can get it if you want to go to the distillery in Kentucky. But there is more in the works. It takes time to make it this good. So there is more in the works. But hopefully it will be available again soon. I've had several double oaks. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times they're just too oaky. You know, and this this is a good balance. Yeah. You have to know what the, what the uh, it's, it's obviously, is it a barreling process? It's going from a oak barrel back to another oak barrel. So it's actually, honestly, we're using the oak alternatives. We're using toasted French oak. Okay. It's just toasted French oak in the vat. Gotcha. Well, I think you, they've, you, they have mastered that. This is excellent. Yeah. Like I said, it took me, it took me more drinks than it should have to decide if I liked it or not. Mm. It was so different than every other double oak that I've tried. I just couldn't, I was like, I don't know, but it's pretty fantastic. Yeah, I, I don't even know how to describe that. I mean, the butterscotch is the best possible way. I mean, imagine the butterscotch in a glass yep. with whiskey. Yeah. Really good. Okay. And I brought one more treat. Yes. When you said the AC was out, uh -huh. whenever we launched the... goes out of the way. Whenever we launched the rye... We were at a Kentucky Whiskey Festival. It's so hot. It's so sticky. Who wants to drink, you know, right. brown spirits in that kind of weather? Somebody had the bright idea of getting a slushy machine. 
and the Rye Rita mm -hmm. was born. Right. This is very simple. Two parts margarita mix. Okay. One part our signature rye whiskey. Okay. Um, you could add a little Contra or Grand Marnier or even some orange bitters if you wanted to get a little bit of that sweeter orange citrus okay. in there. But like I said, it's really simple. Is that Two the, to one. Is that the recipe on Pursuits? Yes, website? actually All it right. is. I'll put the link for that down in the description. Please check it out because I know I'm going to. I use the uh, Trace Agaves margarita mix just okay. because I think that it's a good product. Okay. You could get the you know you could get the, the Walmart version or whatever you want, but this is the Rye Rita. Literally, it's two to one. You could do a salt rim if you wanted to. You could do it frozen and blend it up if you wanted to. I just do the mix and the whiskey, and I uh, slice up a couple of limes just to squeeze them in there. But since the AC is broken, yeah. Rye Rita. Cheers. Oh, yeah, that hits yeah. the spot. That would be a dangerous drink. It would be. Yeah. Yeah. This is the, this full disclosure. This is how I spent my Cinco de Mayo, and this is how I spent my Fourth of July. Nice. July fifth and May sixth were not pleasant. <laughs> I imagine not, especially with the yeah. a little bit of the sugar component. I think it's fantastic. You can get a blanco or a reposado tequila, but. I don't, they don't hold up as well to all the sugar in the citrus the way right. the rye whiskey does. Yeah, this is not overly sweet. Mm -mm. I know means. And you don't lose the whiskey. You still, you can, you know that there's something in there. Right. So. Well, that's important for that us. That was a whiskey drinkers. Yes. Yeah. We want yeah. it to taste like what it is. Well, I can't thank you enough. This has been, this has been awesome. It's actually exceeded my expectations. You came in with more than I thought, especially, uh, especially this. So uh, I, I wish the best for you and Pursuit Spirits. I, I think they're going to, uh, based on what I've had here today, they're going to do uh, big things, no doubt. Pursuit Spirits, is it's available on Sealbox. And if, if you go on to PursuitSpirits.com, you can go to where to buy. If they are distributing in your state, you just put in your zip code. It'll tell you the stores that are closest to you. Or um, you know, feel free to reach out to doesn't want any of the socials. Try to help you out and get some get something in your hands if we can. Very good. I'll try and put some links down in the descriptions. You guys can uh, check out their website and all. But that'll do it for this episode. Again, thanks, Dan. It was nice to meet you, yep. and thanks for coming in. Appreciate thanks again it. for having me. Cheers, guys.